Uh, I've I've heard a lot about um I've heard a lot about the catch US CPU optimizations. What is the um what is the deal there? Like what actually is the value with that? Like what are they what have they actually done on their distro? Or well, on their like kernel? This. Yeah, so basically they're like GCC and mm. whatever compilers compile options. <laughs> Uh, by default, x86 has like four subsets. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an x84 v1 that works on all x86 64 CPUs from like the Athlon x64 till the, the latest Intel or AMD device. Oh, uh, v1 CPU. goes back even further than that. <laughs> v1, yeah. But basically, it's way slower and, and less efficient on mm -hmm. the, the more recent you go. Yeah, yeah. V V2 is like, I think, like first generation Intel CPUs um, or something. Uh, V2. Pull up the yeah, I've x86. Got the, I've got the, the um, Wikipedia cause... open right now. It's... Theoretically, the what is that? Two thousand and eight, the Nahelm chips, which is prior to the the renaming they did, um, and then AMD Bulls uh, bulldozer, AMD Jaguar. So around around two thousand eight or so. Yeah. So b basically, the x eighty six v two will n programs compiled with it will not function on all. On pre two thousand and eight CPUs, mm -hmm. but are faster on post two thousand and eight CPUs than V one. Mm -hmm. The same thing carries over to V three and V four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, V four. V four co four codes runs the fastest on the latest AMD processors, but will not work with anything like like even fourteenth gen doesn't have V four on all chips. Yeah, V4's really... V4's a really weird one, because that's... I, no one can really agree what it is. Um, for anyone who's not really aware of the CPU version levels thing, this this wasn't a thing that was there from the start. This was applied retroactively, I believe... I want to say something like 2020, something like that. It's a fairly recent concept. So it makes enough sense for the older chips but with the newer chips where the features are still being added it, no one's really sure on what they want to be in v4 so optimizing for v4 even if you have a chip newer than um like theoretically things newer than 2017 should be v4 but there's a lot of random chips where they're missing things like AVX 512 or random other features where it would fall out of that category. I think the main yeah, issue there yeah, is in, Intel removing AVX 512 from their desktop processes. So <laughs> yeah. That kind yeah, of so kind of screws them over there. Here's here's something funny like the Intel 11th gen uh, was V4 com was like V4 compatible. Mm -hmm. Uh, they took it out in 12th and 13th and 14th gen. <laughs> like, 11th gen was the V4, but 13th gen wasn't. Yeah. Uh, my current CPU is an i9-1300H. <laughs> so basically, like, the decision was done for us for which level we would initially use. <laughs> like, V3 was the minimum, or I wouldn't be able to use it. Yeah, V3 is a pretty sensible baseline. There's not... At least for what most people are using, there aren't modern chips being made that are V2. Yeah, there are technic. If you want to, if you want to be very technical, there are chips being made. They're just not consumer chips. Uh, like I think like most only twenty twenty two onwards, I think they, there were some Intel atoms that didn't oh. for some reason have AVX two. Yeah, I forgot and about twenty twenty two. I forgot. I like, basically... help you feel one of those though. Like, basically, for most consumers, like, most people uh, have fourth gen as a minimum. Mm -hmm. And yeah, fourth yeah. gen, like, that's pretty old, and it's V3 compatible. So it was, like, the perfect compatibility to performance ratio x86 V3. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
The other optimization is like PGO and LTO. These are complex linker things that even I don't understand. Uh, they do boost performance quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And they're a simple link. Yeah, b back to what I was saying about the Ubuntu thingy. Mm -hmm. So anyways, we had an eye for them. So you had to modify the source code and stuff to be desnapified. Uh, add the compile, the compile stuff to that. The compile flags for the CPU optimization. Uh, after that, you rebuild every single Ubuntu package. Mm -hmm. We said to ourselves, if we're, if we're gonna rebuild everything from scratch, why not move to Debian and just bump the sources and then we don't have to edit it anything? Mm -hmm. It made perfect sense, so we went with that. Mm -hmm. 